This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 9320. This is show number 111. That's three ones. I don't know if you're into numerology, but uh, that equals three. Maybe that's why the market's going down today, Nick. Yeah, it could be, Kerry. You never know. Uh, that, <laughs> that stuff does hold some weight sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so. So, you know, every dog has its day, and then every dog has its fleas, right? That's right, and today we are seeing a lot of fleas. So people are actually fleeing the market, no pun intended. But, yeah, we have a pretty good down day on our hands today. The NASDAQ is getting trampled down 3.4%. But, again, when things go parabolic and the leadership starts to thin out, that's, that's not to be unexpected. And I always tell everybody, you know, don't chase these parabolic moves. I have not been personally in a lot of swing trades as of late, but I haven't been fighting the market on the downside. And the reason is because the markets were melting higher. But I always tell everybody, you got to be careful. This is, you know, we're in the election zone where, you know, basically we have 60 days to go. And um, the, uh, the other part of it is that the markets really just went parabolic. And, you know, since we've started this show, we've talked about the parabolic pattern for so long. And we see it in everything. And, and, you know, NASDAQ just completed that parabolic. It looks parabolic pattern, it looks like, at this stage of the game. So these things are coming in pretty hard today. But it's good to see. They get another opportunity down the road. Hey, the everything uh, bull market, you know, it's been a bull market in everything, literally. And maybe that's uh, coming to an end shortly. Well, good news on the jobless claims front, if you can believe any of the numbers the government puts out. Uh, today, we had uh, a weekly initial jobless claims report uh, came in at 881,000. So that's back below 1 million. If you remember last week, we got up, we were above a million uh, last Thursday. So that's uh, much, much better. The expectations, I think, were calling for 915,000. So that's a 130,000 uh, number better improvement from last week. Um, it's also, you know, a number that's below the psychological 1 million mark. So Everybody should you know take note of that. Uh, that's a big number because when you hear over a million, it just really does something to the psyche uh, of people. Back under a million, things look a little bit better. And the continuing claims also declined uh, to 13.25 million from a revised count of 14.49 million. This is also showing improvement. So overall, not not uh, not bad here. We're we're starting to see uh, better numbers. And tomorrow we'll have the number out from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, and uh, that's a government number, so we'll see what they have to say. Right. Hey, so, so then continuing claims are down, which means less people are collecting, which means more people are working? I think that's what it means. <laughs> I think that's what it means. <laughs> we can only hope, right? Uh, you know, it's been down, but the fact of the matter is, this interesting article I sent to you, and we're not talking about efficacy or reality of COVID pandemic, pandemic. that's not the point. What I sent you, though, is that the northern states peaked first. 33 states were in the first wave, and then 17 states, including our home state, Florida, was in the second wave. The first wave peaked uh, right around uh, May, end of June, actually, in New York. It peaked uh, right in the beginning of April. And now it appears that the second wave which isn't the second wave that they're talking about. It's the second wave of states. It appears that uh, it's peaked here as well. Hospitalizations in Florida are down like two-thirds by two-thirds for COVID. And really, it's happening uh, just in time for the election. And maybe the market has known this all along. Well, I always tell everyone that the market is forward-looking. And the market was never giving me any kind of a real sell signal. I mean, recently we've melted up and, and we've gone parabolic, and that's the way all all markets will correct from that pattern generally. But um, overall, the underlying pattern is still very, very strong for the major indexes. And, you know, that was something that not only in March, 
um, did I see us hit a significant support area. But throughout this entire time, you got to remember, this is almost six months now of upside, well, at least over five now. So we, we've had quite a run, and now markets are doing some you know, backing and filling, and I think we're getting some natural Cor- natural corrective pullback um, at the at today, and and hopefully we'll get more of it. But um, the the reality of it is, you know, the charts will tell you what to do, but the market is always forward looking, and that's something that you know a lot of people um, don't, don't realize. They 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 rely on hearing these talking heads in the media. I mean, you know, if you would have listened to uh, guys like Anthony Fauci and yeah. uh, Niall Ferguson and all these other guys that came out with these reports, I mean, you know, you'd, you'd probably still be hiding in the basement. Yeah. So in other words, the market is smarter than Fauci. I think so. I mean, for me, <laughs> I, I only follow the, the charts. Uh, and in the old days, we used to call it following the tape. And again, price action will dictate, you know, what is going to happen. And um, again, you know, we have not made a full recovery by any stretch, but the market's always forward looking by at least six to nine months. Yeah. Yeah, that is very true. And, you know, it's just it just shows that uh, the market really does know best, whether it's manipulated or not. We can all agree upon that. But. Manipulation can only carry it so far. The free money, all that, if the market wanted to head lower, it would still head lower, even with all the liquidity, right? That's right. And and we have seen that. I mean, you could just think about, you know, past times. Uh, just go back to 2009, 2008. I mean, they were putting liquidity into the system, and the market didn't bottom until March 2009. So, yeah, there are definitely. You know, uh, periods where, you know, when the markets go one way, they're bigger than what central bankers are able to to control. Yeah. So, in other words, uh, no matter what the tools at the disposal of the central bankers, uh, they can't beat the market when it's against them. And uh, it might take time, but eventually that's going to be the case for sure. So gold and silver, we're taking a, a little break today, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. If you take a look at uh, gold futures today, they actually just went positive. They were negative earlier. Now they're up three points. And then if you look at uh, silver futures today, um, you know, they're down nine cents. I'm not going to make much out of that. That's a decline of around, you know, three tenths of one percent. So, yeah, they, they're just taking a little bit of a pause. I'd love to see them pull back a little bit more or just stay on the sidelines and build that big base because ultimately, you know, I'm looking for gold to go much, much higher than it is, as well as silver, which I even think is a better play than gold. Yeah, yeah, we agree on that for sure. But what are the uh, mining stocks doing today? Because they are kind of been leading the metal all through this most recent rally, which is kind of what you want to see. Yeah, the mining stocks are pulling back today as well. They're actually uh, the GDX, which is the gold miners ETF. That's something I follow and trade pretty Pretty frequently, that uh, is down about one and a half percent today. Sixty-one cent decline there, and then you have the junior miners, the GDX. That's down about one point one five percent. So that's actually showing a little bit of of relative strength compared to the GDX, which is the bigger gold miner. So um, you know, I'm keeping them on the radar right now. I think they need to do a little bit more backing and filling, but um, you know, nothing terrible out there in the in the gold space. Yeah, yeah. It's just you know, I just looking back, Nick. You're- Everyone said you were, like, we talked about this before, and I don't mean to belabor the point, but everyone said you were crazy. I mean, this is it. The markets are finished. And I guess the markets aren't finished until the government, the central bank, and the currency are finished, right? I mean, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's always music to my ears, though, when people think I'm totally out there and I'm totally wrong. So. You know, when I hear stuff like that, I, I kind of think I'm more right than wrong. I, I never want to be on the same side as the crowd. Um, when that happens, and if that happens, I, I know I'm already in protective mode. So right now, everybody's getting bullish. I mean, they have this guy from on on the shows right now that just says stocks do nothing but go up. Now, I'm in caution yeah, mode. You know, I, I I've already told my members, um, hey, we're not we're not going to over leverage ourselves here. I know some of the people get frustrated because they're gambling addicts and they want to be in a trade every five minutes. But I said, hey, I want to be in the right trade. I don't want to be in the wrong trade. That's the the one thing that'll separate a professional from an amateur is uh, the person that wants to be in a trade just because they need action. 
Um, I want to just be in stocks when they tell me to be in them and I'll short them as well when they tell me I need to short them. So, you know, again, um, never, you never want to follow the crowd. The legendary Bernard Baruch used to say that never follow the crowd. One simple line, just a few words. Um, and, and again, just watch the charts. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, we, we agree on that. And certainly to trade for the sake of trading is, is completely worthless. Uh, it is a, uh, really kind of negative activity it produces absolutely nothing and returns you absolutely nothing well i mean it just amazes me that somebody will be willing to put up hundreds of thousands of dollars into an equity to to watch their money you know usually go you know go against them and and they'll they'll have they'll you know cash out at, at a loss it doesn't make any sense to me why wouldn't you just want to follow the criteria and and the steps that produce good results in markets. It just, it still baffles me to this day that people kind of like to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of, uh, of that movie, the Wolf of wall street when, who is it? Uh, Woody Harrelson is, or I think it was or Matthew McConaughey is explaining to Leonardo DiCaprio how the market works and how, how investors work and that the object isn't to, uh, isn't to make you money in the market. It's to keep them uh, occupied and, uh, <laughs> you know, basically on a sugar high. And, you know, that when you make them money, it's really bad because then they keep expecting more. You got to keep <laughs> them on edge, right? I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of, I guess there's some truth to that because I, I have to tell you, you know, people just don't, the one, th- the one thing I see most traders lack is patience. They just always, always want to be engaged in a trade, and they always want to have their heart beating. You know, I, I just want to be engaged in good trades. I just want to be involved when the chart says, hey, this is when you want to get into this trade. This is where the odds are favorable. But I see it so often each and every day where people just want to be in something just for the sake of gambling. I mean, you could actually go to – there's casinos all over the country. You could just go there and throw some money in a slot machine if you want to give it away. Yeah. And, and that's a surefire way to give it away too. And yeah, you got to laugh because uh, people get hooked on the adrenaline and the dopamine, the excitement. There's nothing uh, better high when you buy a stock and it goes up tenfold. I mean, that is the ultimate. And then they're just chasing the feeling rather than the actual engaging in the proper trade. And I've been guilty of it myself here. And I've, but because I've kind of a student of humanity and of myself i've uh, hopefully learned from it that the name of the game here is to make money not to make dopamine yeah well i like that maybe that should be the title today but uh <laughs> you know the, it's so true i i couldn't say it any better um but that's if there if there's one fault to humans it's it's that they just have that gambling nature I, and i i love speculating but you know, you, you want to speculate when the odds are in your favor. You don't want to speculate um, when the odds are not in your favor. And that's the difference between a trader and a gambler. Yeah, and that's, that's really it. You want to, want to speculate when you have an advantage or some type of perceived advantage. You don't want to be in there with everyone else doing the same thing because then it's almost certain that you're going to get burned. That's where market psychology comes in so important, and that's why you need to be a a contrarian, basically. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why you have to be a contrarian. And I always tell everybody, it takes time to develop that kind of psyche. It doesn't come naturally. It wasn't natural for me. It was very, very tough. I was, you know, when I first started, I would see, wow, this thing's so high, it's going to go higher. But now I only buy stocks when they pull back to support levels, basically. Or if they break out, I can calculate where the breakout's going and I'll jump on board. That's really the only time that I'll even get involved in 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 a, in a trade. I mean, I don't want to pay up for something. I don't think anybody wants to go to the supermarket and pay double for what they pay for a gallon of milk. You know, you could just wait for that thing to go on sale, and then you could just buy the milk. I mean, it's just the same way. You got to treat the markets the same way you would treat life. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You want to buy value. You don't want to buy something just because it's cheap, because that's the wrong reason. You want to buy something that's cheap and should be where the market has effectively mispriced the security. And then 
when it eventually discovers it or rediscovers it, it will probably go higher than it should be. That's where you make the money. That's right. And that's how it's done um, by all the professionals in this business. So again, if you know, you want to be in this business a short amount of time, uh, the sure way to do it is to, you know, chase equities at highs. Just think about it. Um, people that were buying, you know, Tesla, uh, just two days ago at $500 a share today, it's four $411 a share, <laughs> but somebody bought that stock above 500, you know, yeah. and it happens all the time. Why chase that parabolic move? It's beyond me, but somebody got sucked into that and did that trade. And I, again, it, you know, it's just par for the course. We see it each and every day here. Yeah. Hey, and just one more, one more mention about split mania years ago, stock split far more often than they do today. You wouldn't have an Amazon trading at $3,000 a share and a Google trading at 1900 or 2000 a share. Even, even stocks trading at multi-hundreds, they would always be splitting. And we talked about this before. The concept of a stock split adds nothing to the revenues, zero to the profits. All it does is increase the number of shares outstanding by the uh, by the uh, i guess the numerator right and um that's it right yeah that is it and um it, it really doesn't do anything it just you know it doesn't change the market cap of a company it doesn't do anything i mean if you have 100 shares they split five for one you got now you got 500 i mean it's very 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 simple um but you know people get get lured into that they get lured into a cheaper stock price you know and and you saw it here when they split on monday you had two stocks, Apple and Tesla, both split. They they rallied up those first two days. And like I said, they'll probably do that. Then they'll pull the rug out from under them. And that's exactly what you see. Tesla down, you know, $35 today. It was down big yesterday. Apple is down uh, 5% today. It was down uh, yesterday off of its gap higher open. And they just pulled the rug out from under them. So now these guys, some of them may stop out. Some of them may be long-term holders. And, you know, they'll, they'll suffer through a little bit of pain um, on a pullback here. So. Uh, again, we see the same game over and over. It just repeats itself. Like uh, legendary Jesse Livermore used to say, uh, Wall Street never changes because human nature never changes. Yeah, and I would say venture to say life never changes either for the very same exact reason is that people really never change. And we could get into the whole philosophy of that, but we'll save that for our, our new counseling show that will be uh, – opening up in a couple of weeks. Now, just kidding, just kidding. One <laughs> podcast uh, a day is probably about all you can handle, Nick. I do it all day long. So uh, if you want that therapy one, I can recommend you some some other podcast. Go to, just email me, kl at com. Go over to Nick's site, see his amazing trading record and all of his valuable info about trading. And while we're at it, Nick, uh, the Twitter feeds at ITMS at Nick Santiago zero one at Carrie Lutz. And again, the email address KL at Carrie Lutz.com. That's it for today, Nick. We will pick up tomorrow. Sounds good, Carrie. Have a great day. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, inthemoneystocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01. 